Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, host of the Football History Dude podcast, right here on the Sports History Network. Now, before we jump into another sports history adventure, let me tell you about this episode's sponsor. We partnered with Rochester Sports Autographs, the largest JSA authenticated autograph distributor in the United States, where you can get deals on over 30,000 autograph sports collectibles. They even have film, music, and other entertainment autographs on the site, so there's something for everyone. Perhaps you're looking for a gift for Mother's Day, or maybe Father's Day. Heck, who needs a holiday as an excuse to give a piece of sports history to your loved ones? Or how about yourself? Today seems like a great day to add to your sports cave, right? But how is RSA able to offer such great deals on JSA authentication, you ask? Well, they do this by making deals directly with athletes, so there are no extra markups, and they choose to pass these savings on to the customer. All orders from Rochester Sports Autographs are top quality and shipped to your door with top authentication and money-back guarantee. And to make sure RSA knows that the Sports History Network sent you, we created a special link for you. All you have to do is head to shoprsa.com forward slash SHN. Again, that's shoprsa.com forward slash SHN. Head over there to get your piece of sports history today. So the 87 playoffs. Jordan made it as a 40 and 42. The Celtics did it again. Okay. He played the same three all-stars because here's, here's another argument that you have is that they say, well, Jordan played against all these hall of famers and all-stars. Okay. I get the hall of fame issue. However, you can't say LeBron's play who, who's making the hall of fame out of the years LeBron's played because they're not all done playing yet. Like that's a problem. So I went off all-stars. How many all-stars did you play against? If you played against the same All-Stars every single year, guess what? That counted as one group of All-Stars. Whether you made the All-Stars in 86 or the, and then also made the All-Star team in 87, it's still the same three guys that made All-Stars. I'm not counting you twice. Everybody else is going to. I'm not because they want to boost some stats. Whatever. So, 87 playoffs, Celtics won 3-0. Bulls make the playoffs at a 40-42 and record. So... Jordan's first three years, he's won 108 games. Okay? Keep that in mind. Then he averaged this series, it was 35 7, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals, and 2.3 blocks per game. So, he there's that. All right? Then the 88 playoffs, he beat the Cavs, and then he loses the Detroit. And the semifinals, he played against. Two All Stars that series: Brad Daughtry and Isaiah Thomas. Still averaged, you know, he averaged forty five, five, four, two, and one against the Cavs, and then twenty seven, eight, four, and two against the and point six against the Detroit Pistons. So yes, so Jordan at this point is scoring a lot of points, and his teams aren't winning games. So, but he has no other help because. His teammates, his best teammates in those first seasons are, oh, let me, so Jordan's teammates those years was Orlando Woolridge in 84 and 85. He had nine wins, a nine win share, okay, and a 2.5 vorp. Everybody else was negative 0.1, 0.4. Minus point one, minus point two. You had the next highest win share total was Steve Johnson with a three point one. And I know you guys never heard of Steve Johnson because I never heard of Steve Johnson until now either. <laughs> All right. And then eighty five, eighty six, when Jordan played eighteen games, he still had a win share of one point four and his VORP was still one point three. Again, his best teammate was Orlando Woolridge at five point six and two point three. And then you had Gene Banks at 4.3 and 1.5. Everybody else was below that on the VORP scale. Like you had 0. 0.9, 0. 0.7, 0, 1.1, a minus, and a zero. Like, so you had rotation guys. Like he never had that second player. Okay, 86, 87. Jordan's second best teammate, or Jordan's best teammate was John Paxson. He had a six win share and a 0. 0.4 VORP. Like, <laughs> he's a starting guard. 
when he shouldn't be starting. He doesn't fall in that starting category. Oh, yeah. Or Dave Corzine at a point nine and Banks at a point four. Okay. And then in 87, 88. So 87, 88, they go 50 and 32. Okay. So they go 50 and 32. It's the, uh, that's when they, they beat the Cavs and that's when they lose to Detroit. Okay. And on that team, Jordan had, it was Jordan, Oakley, Corzine, Paxson, Grant, Brad Sellers, Scotty Pippen, and Sam Vincent. Okay. So Jordan had a uh, win shares of 21.2 and a, tw- and a 12.5 VORP. Okay. Now, if you want to translate VORP into uh, wins, if you want to chan- chan- change it to wins above replacement, like you have in baseball, what you do is you take the VORP, take, so Jordan's 12.5, times 2.7 and you get 33 so he accounted for 33 games is what he accounted for 33 games is what he was above a replacement player but again you really can't do that in basketball because it's all interchangeable and everything else and blah 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 and it's, it's not it doesn't work that well it doesn't work the way you want it to work like you do in baseball so you have to just take VORP as it is and then be that, done with that so again he has a couple starters with him and then a bunch of rotation players. Okay? And he, they get to 50 and 32. But in... And then... So, and then with... So, basically, what you do is then you take... So, playoff-wise, you still can use Vort, but it's a little more condensed because it's not as many games. It's it's just... It's crazy. So, then, 88-89, this is the... Second year with Jordan, Pippen, Paxson, and Grant on the team. Okay? So this is year number two. 89, they beat the Cavs, who were 57 and 25. They beat the Knicks, who were 52 and 30. He also played against, you know, two other All-Stars, Price and and Larry Nance Sr. Um, So, yeah. And then the series, so this is where it is. So the 89 playoffs, so this is where Jordan takes a huge leap on his assists. Okay, so before he's been averaging, what, 4.6, 5.4, or 4.8, um, 6. So not a whole lot of assists this Okay, so this year, he takes a huge leap in passing the ball. So against the Cavs, he scored 39.8 points. He had 5.8 rebounds, 8.2 assists. He averaged three steals and .4 blocks. Against the Knicks, he averaged 35.7, a 9.5, 8.3, a 2.5, and a 1.3. And then against Detroit, it was 29.7 and a 5.5 and a 6.5 and a 2.0 and a half a block. Okay, His teammates that year was Jordan, Grant, Pippen, and Paxson. Hodges, Sellers. Sam Vincent and Bill Cartwright. So this is the team. The, the, the fighting, the starting five: Jordan, Grant, Pippen, Paxson, and Cartwright. Those five are the ones that actually go on to be the starters for the championship team. So this is their first year together. Okay, and they went and they go forty-seven and thirty-five. Jordan had a nineteen-point-eight win share. Grant had a six-point-four. Pippen had a four-point-zero. Oh. Now I'm going to tell you guys. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of knowledge. Drop a little knowledge on this the whole podcast is one thing I did find out that I didn't realize. Well, I mean, I saw it with the eye test because me, Scotty Pippen, didn't pass the eye test as a kid, and everybody's like, "Oh yeah, he's the best." No, Horace Grant was by far Jordan's best teammate. Horace Grant was by far Jordan's best teammate for three, four years, five years. Pippen didn't get good. Get good. Jeez. Get good, kid. Uh, Pippen didn't become Pippen until after Jordan left. And then when Jordan came back, all he did was fill in the roles, but we're not there yet. So you have Jordan at a 9.8, 19.8. And then, okay, 
and Grant, and so there's that. And then we got in the playoffs, Jordan was a four win share and a two point five VORP, while Grant was a one point six and a point three. And Pippen stepped up a little bit, but he was still only accounted for one point three win shares and a point eight VORP. So he still wasn't like he was still a starter. They're both starters at that point, and yeah. Now eighty nine ninety, they go fifty five and twenty seven. Again, it's Jordan and Grant at the top two, and way ahead of Pippen. Like Grant is has separated himself out from Pippen, even in the playoffs. In the eighty nine ninety playoffs, Grant plays better than Pippen. Oh, I guess the uh, yeah so. 89-90. Yeah, 89-90 playoffs. Grant plays better than Pippen. So in the 90 playoffs, they beat the Bucks, Philly, and then they lose to Detroit again. Okay? So, so let's see. 85, the Bucks didn't win the championship. 86, Celtics, I think, won the championship that year, and I think they won in 87 as well. 88, Detroit lost to the Lakers. 89, Detroit won. 90, Detroit won. And then 91... So here you get to 91, and Pippen has kind of made the step over Grant, but not much. So you have Jordan with a 20.3 win share. Okay, so this team went 61 and 21. Now, Jordan had a 20.3 win share. So Jordan's win share is kind of coming down, not a whole lot. I mean, still around the 20 range, so he's still your best player in the regular season. Then you got Pippen and Grant. And then it's a huge fall off from there with Paxson and Cartwright. But at this point, Paxson is a 1.1 VORP, so he's actually a starter now. Grant's a 3.1. Pippen's a 5.9. So you got all-star. So basically you have all-star potential with both of those guys. And then you got Jordan, who's a 10.8 VORP. Just outstanding. So, and then they beat the Knicks, which won 39 games that year. Jordan had 29, 4, 6. So, and even, oh, in the 90 playoffs, Jordan averaged 36, 43, and 32 for points. And he had 7, 7, and 6 assists. So, again, he's averaging a 30, a 30 plus points. So, at this point, Jordan still is doing it all and lifting his teammates as well. As you can tell by Scottie Pippen's getting better. Okay. So, Jordan brought Pippen along. Grant was already good. Like, Grant came into the league busting. So, then you have... So, then you got the 91 playoffs. They beat the Lakers. Jordan averaged 31.2, 6.6, 11.4 assists that year. 11.4 assists. Okay? Just remember that. Like, y'all say Jordan doesn't pass the ball. Clearly, Jordan passes the ball in the playoffs. He may not pass the ball a lot in the regular season... But he's definitely passing the ball in the playoffs. 92, he just comes out and scores and murders people. Jordan murdered people. And this is also the first year that Scottie Pippen made a play a all-star as well. Or I guess it's not the first time. It's the second time that Pippen's made all-star as well. So then Jordan comes out against Miami with a 45-9-6 line. 9.7 rebounds, 6.7 assists, averaged 45 points. Like, yeah. You got the Knicks, 31.3, 5.7, 4.3. Pretty much took, you know, didn't pass the ball. But if you look at the 91, 92, 91 and the 92 playoffs, okay, you have 91 and 92. Grant is still the second best player on the team, okay? Grant in 91-92 is the second best player on the team. All right. And Jordan made those. It was just crazy of how they did that. So, like, Jordan was a 4.1 win share, 3.3, and Pippen was a 3. Grant was 3.3, and Pippen was a 3.1. So, Jordan, Grant, and Pippen was a three-headed monster. So that's where Jordan's got the better teammates. Because even in 92 93, you got Jordan 17.2, 9.1, and even like their VORP. I mean, Pippen's best VORP in the playoffs was 91 92 at a 2.0. He 
He never topped a two in the playoffs. Ever again. Okay. Grant is... Horace Grant is very underrated. Very underrated. And he was constantly in that one to two range in the playoffs. Where you want him to be. Like... Horace Grant is by far one of the most underrated basketball players ever that I'm for what he did. Okay. So then 92, 93. So 92, 93, they play the Suns. Okay. And we're going to get to some game scores here, but we'll talk about this one and about, uh, let's see. Where's I had to find it. Sorry. I got like, all right, right here it is. So the 92-93 Suns Bull Series. Okay. Um, Jordan just goes off in that series. He has a 29.6 game score. It's the highest of his career. Previously, it was 29.4. Okay. Pippen was a 15.6, Grant a 12.8, and 11.2. So, like, Pippen showed up at times in the finals. Those first three finals, Pippen showed up. <coughs> Sorry. Because against the Lakers, he was a 17.5 game score. So, yeah. So, Pippen showed up in the finals three straight years. But that Bulls-Blazers series, yeah. I know I'm jumping around a lot here. My ADD's kicking in a little bit. So, it was the 90... So... Basically, the Bulls don't get three the first three championships without Jordan, okay? Because he had game scores of 29.4, uh, 25.8, and 29.6. So basically, the offense and everything went through Jordan that time. So this is going to be all pre, um, pre-baseball, okay? But Grant's still by far the second best player on the team in the regular season and in the playoffs, just an FYI. Because even 92 93, he's getting, he has a 2.4 win share and a 1.9 VORP. Jordan's got a 2.7 VORP. Like, Grant's right there behind Jordan. <laughs> like, is like right there. All right, now, everybody talks about what the Bulls did after Jordan left for baseball. Okay, here's the deal. This team was already established, as we can tell. Like, if you take Jordan out of the equation, Pippen steps up a little bit more, Grant steps up a little bit more, and do they make do they make a run into the into the finals like they did? No, they don't. This team doesn't make the pl- finals without Jordan those first three years. End of story. Okay? So, 93-94, Jordan leaves to go play baseball. Dad passed away. Sad time in his life. Goes and plays baseball. Pippen comes over. He's going to take, he's like, I'm the guy. Well, you're not that great of a guy because your 11.2 win shares and your 6.8 VORP is not much different than what you had any other time in your career. So he really didn't step up that much. So he's still playing. Jordan's a, Pippen's is a great second guy, but they didn't have that guy that could take it over. Grant was still 10.0 and a 3.9. So Grant... His numbers kind of went down went down without Jordan, but not much. I mean, and then you had Armstrong step up. He had a 7.5 win share and a 1.3 VORP. And Kerr it was a 6.1 and a 1.5 VORP. So you had four guys that, you know, are there. So then, but in the playoffs, this is where they shrink again. They weren't, I mean, again, they're not playoff because you got a 1.2 and a 0.7, a 1.7 and a 0.7. Like, yeah, that team made it to the second round and lost. Like, that's where that should have team would have won. The previous three teams without Jordan would have done the same thing. Then you got the 94-95 Bulls. Pippen still playing Pippen things, 11.8 and a 7 point. Like, that's solid. Is But then you got you, had an, you throw in Kukoc, who now replaces Grant, at a 10.0 and a 4.1. So, that's pretty equal. Armstrong stepped it up a little bit at an 8.1, but his VORP was a 1.1. So, I mean, or 1.3. Then you got 
Then you got Kerr at a 5.9 win share and a 1.4. I mean, Jordan comes back in the playoffs and is the best Vort player at a 1.0 and win shares at a 1.3. So then you go with the 95-96, okay? 95-96 season. Jordan leads his team to a championship, okay? But... He had a 4.7 win shares. Pippen's kind of stepped up. However, the game score, this is the kicker. This is where I say they give the MVP to the winning team, to a player on the winning team, because Jordan was not the best player in this Bulls Sonic series. Sean Kemp was. Okay, If it was not for Dennis Rodman, the Bulls lose to the Sonics. Just saying. Okay, That's one knock against Jordan. Okay, he was not the best player in that series. Then you go with the Bulls versus the Jazz, and it was basically the Jordan and Pippen show. 96-97. Um, let's see. So, oops. Doobie, doobie, doo. Yeah, so 96-97, you got Jordan with an 18.3 win share, Pippen with a 13.1, Kerr 7.5, Kucho 6.9, they went 69-13, and 72-10 oh, and 10 was the year before. So when Jordan comes back, he's more of a team player. His, his, his win shares is kind of like, he's kind of spread the love out to everybody else. He's not being as dominant as he was before baseball. And I don't, and I want to talk about the, what the Bulls did after Jordan left for the final time, because this is when they did a complete tear down of the team. Okay. Cause that's where we should really be talking about it. Not the 95 team or the 94 team. Like that team was already going to make playoffs anyway, without Jordan. It was already, it was already built that way. Okay. But after that, the Bulls completely tore it down. Okay. 13 and 37, 17 and 64, 15 and 67, 21 and 61 for the next four years. Okay. Jordan was the best player in every finals except for one. Um, and Jordan went against 34 different all-stars in his time in the, in the playoffs as well. Okay. So let's go to LeBron. Jordan had better te- so right now Jordan's got good teammates and you want to know and I'm going to tell you this a lot of people point to that 06 07 team with the uh with Braun and here's the thing okay Braun was good okay early on in his career he just wasn't Jordan good that's all I'm saying that's all I'm saying is J- Braun was not Jordan good. Cause so Braun's first year in the league, he had a 5.1 win share and a 2.9 VORP. Okay. He did have the tightest VORP on the team, but Boozer was the leader of that first team. Then you had Braun and you had Gooden and you had Ilgauskas. Okay. Those are the three guys. And you're like, well, it's Ilgauskas and Gooden. Like, yeah, but Braun only accounted for 14.3 of those win shares and a 9.1 uh, Vorp, he had a, he did have a nine point one Vorp though. So he carried that team, but his win share, like so, so that's what, that, so that's where it's twofold. Like you can look at win shares and you can look at Vorp, but it's whichever one you want to go off of. I'm looking at both. You got sixteen, and then his third year, he's sixteen point three and a nine point four. Elgauskas is still a two point one and a one point zero. So, Jordan had, so he actually has starters on his team. Guys that should be starting the league, guys that should be all-stars in the league, okay? But LeBron's still setting himself above the rest. And then, uh, he saw in 06, 07, a 13.7, a 6.6, a 6. So, in 07, that 07 team was pretty much spread out. And even in the playoffs, wasn't that, I mean, LeBron had a 2.2. Yeah, he carried his team. Uh, but it's that 07 team is not as bad as everybody thought it was. Does Jordan still have better teammates? 
yes, Jordan still has better teammates. That's all I'm saying. So we're gonna get, have to give the nod to Braun, who carried worse teammates farther. Let's put it well. Yeah. So you had right because you had. Uh, where is it at? Jeez, man. Yeah, so you had, definitely had Braun with the better teammates. Oops, there we go. Because Jordan's worst teammates, I mean... I wouldn't even say Braun had better teammates. I would just say... You know what? Braun was actually better than Jordan. Uh, according to Vorp. Because his... Well, his first year, Jordan had a higher Vorp. Well, throwing out the second year. And then a 10.6 and a 9.1. They're probably about even. And then... Jordan had a 12.5. Yeah. And 11.4. Braun had a 9.5. 8.1. 9.8. Point LeBron hit 11.8 finally in... in 2008, 2009, when they went 66 and 16. And so, which, I mean, and let's pick and choose. I mean, do we want to pick and choose? Because, yeah, you can say that 017 was, was one of the most horrible teams ever, but they went 50 and 32 that year. And if you look at... I mean, you want to take LeBron's or Jordan's 47 and 35 year. He had an 11.4 vote. Grant had a 1. Pippen had a 1.5. And, and Paxson had a point three. Meanwhile, over here you got Braun at 8.1. You got Ilgauskas at a 1.3. Verja at 1.1. And Gooden at a 1 point. So, yeah. Like, all starters. I mean, yeah. So, they're, I guess their teammates... When they started really winning, kind of equal out is what it really does. I mean, even when you look at Braun and, let's see, Braun and Wade and Bosch, like, they never get to, oh, well, yeah. I mean, the so the Braun, Wade, and Bosch scenario is... About even with Scott Wade and or Scotty and Mike, or Scott or Mike and Horace Grant, like those three guys. And Rodman wasn't that big of an influence either, as much as everybody thinks he was. In the ninety seven ninety eight was the only year that he was actually any good, and Kukoc was the second best player on there in Vorp with a three point oh. So. I mean, and then at this point, so when LeBron started winning his championships, he had the better teammates, according with Vorp. Okay, if we were gonna go off Vorp, he, they had he had the better teammates. The win shares were not as distributed like they were with LeBron. Accounted for more win shares, is what I'm saying. Um. Where with the Vorp, they were LeBron's teammates were way better than uh, Jordan and Pippen. Like Bosch, Wade, and Braun. Bosch and Wade are better than Pippen and Grant. Or Pippen and Rodman. Let's go that route as well. Like, so you can't really go there with that like yeah he took the Cavs teams really sucked and he made them really good okay I granted that but the Heat teams those those were better than uh, his supporting cast was better than Jordan's supporting cast okay and then you go back to the Cavs he still is, has a better supporting cast than what Jordan did as Irving's got a 4.2 Vorp and Love's got a 3.0 Vorp and he lucked out on some championships I ain't kidding you. Like, LeBron should have probably at least one more championship. Maybe two. Two. He should at least have two more championships. 
So that puts him at six. And I say that because in the 2014 series, Wade doesn't show up. All right. And they lose to the Spurs. Braun had a 22 and a half game score. The next closest was Bosch at a 10.6. Wade was a 7.9. As we said, a game score, 10 is your average. Okay. The 2015 season. Irving played one game, and if he would have continued to play that series, and then they also had no love as well, if he would have had love in Irving, he wins that series over the Warriors because LeBron had a twenty-four a twenty-four point six game score, and Irving had a twenty-one point one in that one game, and then you had Mozgov and Thompson eleven point eight and eleven point two, which best Curry, Iguodala, Green, and Thompson. So that's why I say there's at least two more championships. Okay. 2016, they obviously win. They actually had the two best players in that series with Braun and Irving. The Cavs losing to uh, the Warriors in 17. You got Braun with a 29.6 game score and Durant a 30.3. Man. And then Curry had a 24.1. Like, that 2017 Warriors team is going to beat any team ever assembled. You can at me on that too. I don't care. And then uh, 2018, Durant was a 26.9 game score. Braun had a 28.3. But then they still had Curry, Green, and Thompson. Meanwhile, Braun stuck with Love, Nance, and Smith. So LeBron's so LeBron has done more with less when he's on the Cavs and done more with more when he was on the Heat. Let's put it that way. Okay. And so far, LeBron has faced better competition. Okay. Like, by far. Like, I'll give you the game scores. Here's the here's the game scores of the finals. That's Like I said, that's what I'm basing this off of is playoffs. Your, your personal accomplishments in the regular season doesn't mean squat to me because everybody can... I mean, we could, if we want to do that, then let's throw George Gervin, Bernard King, Pete Maravich all out there as the greatest player of all time. We know they're not, okay? So, Braun had had to go against a 30.3 Durant, a 24.1 Curry, a 10.1 game score Thompson, a 9.5 Green. Then he had to follow it up again the next year with a 26.9 Durant, a 20.1 Curry, a 13.7 Green, and a 9.6 Thompson. Then, he when he won against the Heat, he had to go against a 27.7 Butler. So, <coughs> and he won that one. So again, LeBron's never been, has, hasn't been the best player in his first series, with the, his first finals with the Cavs. He only had a 10.6, and Gooden was a 9.0. Like I said, that, that team, that 07 team was very solid was a f- more solid team than everybody thinks. Okay. And then, so he wasn't the best player there because Parker had a 16.2, Duncan was a 5.3, or a 15.3, and Ginobili was 11.6. The Cavs, the Cavs are just overwhelmed. The 2011 Heat, you got Braun at a 13.7. Wade was a 22.7. So Wade showed up that Braun didn't. Bosch was a 10.9. Okay, that's another thing I found out is Bosch is like good. Bosch has just never been great. So I guess that kind of waters things down too. So then you have Dirk at a 16.6, Jason Terry at a 13.4, Chandler at 11, and Marion at a 10. So the top four players versus these top floor players, it's very equal. However, the maps came out on top. You know, that's how that works out. Then you have the 2012 Heat. You got James at a 23.6. Wade at a 16.4. Bosch at 11.9. Battier showed up with a 9.3. Meanwhile, Durant and Westbrook were at a 20.7 and 18.9. So, he's playing two of the best players. The Thunder just didn't have any help. And that's not a knock against LeBron. Like, Thunder made the championship that year, even though it was a shortened season. Then you got the Spurs Heat. Bronze the best player again. Obviously, they win. Uh, Wade's a 14.9. Bosch is a 12.1. So, like I said, those Heat teams are very similar to the Jordan Bulls teams. 
Okay. Because you got Jordan with a 29 and a 17 for Pippen and a 13 for Grant. And then you got Paxson at a 12. So Paxson showed up at that playoffs in 99-1. So, yeah. So, the, that's, yeah. Because Jordan, Jordan never had, only had one, out of the top three players, there was only one final series where Jordan had somebody under, uh, under 10. And that was Tony Kukoc in ninety six ninety seven at a six point seven. That was their thir- that was their third best player. Okay, but they're going against Malone and Stockton, and Jordan by far was the better player, and Pippen was too, uh, against Stockton anyways. So yeah, so right, Jordan never had a face, never faced anybody like what LeBron has. I mean, so. Like, if you compare the 11 Mavs to the... You can compare the 11 Mavs to basically the 92 Trailblazers. You can compare that Thunder team to the the 91 Lakers. You can compare that Spurs team to, I don't know, the, uh, the Jazz. You can compare that other Spurs team to the Jazz again. Um, that Warriors team that LeBron lost to, you can compare that to, you know, the Blazers, the other Warriors team that LeBron beat, uh, compare that to the Blazers as well. Like, but then you can't compare any of the last three teams he played against to anyone that Jordan played. All right. Now let's go with this. All right. So, Jordan had 14 teammates with an 8 plus win share, okay? LeBron had a 7 had 17 teammates with an 8 plus win share. So Le- like I said LeBron LeBron's teammates weren't as bad as everybody thinks they are. And that's the point that I'm making on the teammates. Is LeBron wasn't as bad as they were. Now, after LeBron left, the Cavs go 19 and 63, 21 and 45 and 24 and 58. So, it, uh, LeBron played against 49 different All-Stars. Okay. Jordan played against only 34. And like I said, I'm not even counting them twice. LeBron played more against more All-Stars. And I understand that's fan voting, but a lot of the fans picked the best players. That's all there is to it. Okay. So, now let's go with playoffs. Here's the playoff scenario. Let's break it down. Jordan averaged 33.1, 33.4 points each playoffs. LeBron was a 28.7. Rebounds. Jordan averaged 6.4. LeBron was a 9. Assists. 5.7 to a 7.2. Steals. 2.1 to a 1.7. Blocks. They were the same. 0.9. Turnovers. 3.1 and a 3.7. Minutes played. They played about the same amount of minutes. 41.8 to 41.5. They shot about the same on field goal percentage at 48.7 and 49.4. Three-point percentage is still 33 and 33. Free throws, 82 and 74. However, Jordan's VORP was a 24.7. LeBron's 33.9. Win shares. Jordan accounted for 39.8 win shares of his, for his team. LeBron, 55.7. Usage, 35 and 32. LeBron's getting used less than the playoffs. True shooting, 56.8 and 58.3. Offensive win shares, Jordan was a 27.3. LeBron accounted for 38.2. And then you want to say LeBron doesn't play defense. And Jordan did because he has one defense player of the year. Defensive win shares. LeBron 17 and a half Jordan 12.4 LeBron made a bigger impact on his playoff teams than Jordan just saying and again I'm not even a LeBron guy everybody knows this I'm not a LeBron guy I'm just stating stating the I am just stating the stats folks all right now you want to say here's another thing another knock well Jordan played only 15 years LeBron's played for I don't know what 20 Okay, let's go with a 15-year to 15-year career. Shall we? We shall. So, 
if you go off based off a of 15 15 career you still have lebron jordan scored 30.1 lebron 27.3 rebound 6.2 to 7.7 5.3 7. to 7.5 7. steals 2.3 to 1.5 they each average a 0.8 block jordan had 2.7 turnovers per game while lebron has three and a half true shooting lebron's the better shooter on true shooting, 56.9 and 59.9, three points better than Jordan. Well, equates probably to one extra, you know, probably equates to at least one extra bucket somewhere. Usage, 30, Jordan was used 33.3% of the time. LeBron, LeBron 31.8. Win shares, 214 for Jordan, 213.9 to Bron. Very close. So they each have, for a 15 year career they have the same win shares now the 15 year career I took out was LeBron's first three years right yeah his first three years so LeBron's been in the league for 18 years going to be 19 okay VORP again VORP is the one that is the one constant here Jordan had a 116.1 VORP LeBron a 121.1 VORP so even on a 15 year career basis, bronze value above replacement is more than Jordan is. What is that? 10, 10 wins above Jordan. Oh my gosh. My mind is blown people. Like you have not, you have no idea how much my mind is freaking blown right now after doing all this info. I got nothing else. I mean, I have absolutely zero else. If you want to throw at me, I got about 22 pages worth of info here that I did. Okay. On teammates, on everything. So if you want to come at me, find me on Twitter. You want to say, here, better yet, how about this? LeBron's opponent's record in the playoffs Winning percentage was a 635. Jordan's was a 65-7. So again, they played about the same amount of quality of teammate of opponents. Jordan went seven and two and against sixty plus one teams. LeBron went three and five. Okay, no big deal. They go six and four and six and five against fifty five plus one teams. Seven and one and seven and one. Eight no. Bron had fifteen and zero. So yeah, that's fine. Say well, he played weaker opponents. You know what? It doesn't matter, folks. It just doesn't. When the when it mattered the most, he played tougher opponents. <coughs> he played tougher opponents in the playoffs. In the finals. That's when it mattered most. Pippen, sorry for you, bro. You shouldn't be a Hall of Famer. Horace Grant should be in the Hall of Fame. That's all there is to it. Bosh shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame either. You're, I mean, Wade is better than Pippen. Bosh is better than Rodman for crying out loud like that's just how it is it's just wow just wow pippin's not that great folks i'm glad i could solve that problem as well in this thing so all right thank you to basketballreference.com for the stats you compile so i could do this podcast and finally put this debate to an end i was able to cram 14 hours worth of research and do a what hour and a half podcast that's got to be some kind of record right so follow me on twitter one guy with a mic follow me on tiktok one guy with a mic you're gonna get more sports history for me on basketball and baseball we're gonna do more of these like podcasts because these are fun to me and i hope these are gonna be and i know they're gonna be fun to you because i think there's players people forget as always, wherever you're listening to me at, hit that follow button, hit that bell to make sure you're notified when I drop podcasts. And coming from a guy that really dislikes LeBron James, LeBron James is the GOAT. Enough said. The facts, the stats, State the facts. LeBron's the GOAT. No matter what you think anymore. 
whatever you think is done, it's over. Would I t- since they both play two separate positions? Guess what? I'm taking them on my team though. I'm going to have Jordan as my shooting guard, and I'm going to have LeBron run small forward or the point forward because I know he's going to get Jordan the ball. Like he's going to. So yeah, but oh, and you guys want to talk about clutch? They're about the same. I didn't get that stat all the way out, but I just I know they're they're about the same. There's only a few. It's only a few extra things different. It's not that big of a deal. Like if you if you're talking about one or two points, it's not that huge. I'm telling you. So, LeBron's the goat. End of discussion. And if your friends want to argue you still that Jordan's the goat, tell them to come listen to an hour and a half podcast of how I break down everything. I'm out. Have a great day. Deuces. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and we're able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds, as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know, that can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website, seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you got to do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.